my dad died last January. Not the uh, funniest opening line, but we'll see what we can do with it. It's like turning up to a first date and just immediately talking about your eczema. I've got to do a lot to pull this round now to make it at least vaguely entertaining. Um, instead of just depressing. But he died He died just before the pandemic, which ma- it makes me feel a bit hipster. I was losing close family members before. It was cool, mate. And he died. He just died of being bare fucking ill. I don't know if that's an official cause of death, but he was just it was just bare ill. He had like a he had a spinal injury like eight years ago, and then he like had loads of strokes and developed dementia, and then died in a care home. It was like a really long drawn out death. And I'd like to say I was there always, fully enthusiastically willing him to pull through, but a lot of times I was like, "You've got to make this death snappier, fella." I do stand-up comedy where a lot of it's about getting to the point as quickly as possible. And when it came to death, I'm sorry, Dad, but you dithered. You dithered. I've got shit to do. I've got to watch you die. Then I've got to process it. Then I've got to figure out how to put it into my comedy for my own personal gain. Can we Can we not make it longer than this needs to be? Um. So it wasn't really a shock when he died because it, it took so long for him to die, but... I get kind of like bouts where it hits me really hard sometimes. And uh, I guess I'm having that a little bit this week. Uh, So I thought the most psychologically healthy thing to do was to probably make a video about it. I think that's what they suggest in therapy, innit? Just get some content out of it. Clip that shit up for TikTok. Try to get some eyeballs on there. The key to happiness is content, content, content. On that point, on that point, I'm actually well gutted he died last year because... It's kind of a known thing that in comedy, if you do a, an Edinburgh show, an Edinburgh Fringe Festival show about your dad dying, it can like properly launch your career. And he died in January 2020, and then in February 2020, I won this big comedy award, and I was getting like offers for venues in the summer for the Edinburgh Fringe. It was shaping up to be the perfect year. I was like, this is why he waited so long to die. He was he wanted to do it at the moment when my career would have the most momentum. Thank you, Papa. But he didn't account for the pandemic. That was that was a flaw of his, to be honest. He, he never knew when a pandemic was coming. Or even an epidemic. And it, it caused friction between us growing up, to be honest. Re-SARS, re-Ebola. Re-Bird flu, Zika. I was like, Dad, how many more of these things are you going to miss? It was like him missing my football matches. That's how I take it. And then as his final act, he doesn't see coronavirus coming. It's fucking bollocks, man. And he did actually miss a lot of my football, by the way. Or he didn't even take me. My mum used to take me to football. That's why I was always closer with her. I should mention at this point that I judge all people primarily on whether or not they took me to football when I was eight. That's why I don't like Boris Johnson. Never took me to football. I'm not even politically motivated at all, but the amount of times I was waiting on my drive in my shin pads, waiting for him to pick me up and he didn't turn up. Where were you, Bojo? Where were you? What can I actually say about my dad? Um, I was named after him. Chronologically, I mean. Seemed like the right way around to do it. He was called Dave. Imagine if he had to wait till he had me before getting a name. His parents are like, become a father yourself, then we'll see about this name in business. I think that it's the, it's the finality of it, in it, that's hard when someone dies. And if there were, like, complications between you, you could never go back and change it. A lot when a parent dies, you can't resent them in the same way you can when they're alive. Like, you can't blame them for the ways they fucked you up and stuff like that. I have to choose a new father figure to blame everything on. And I've chosen Chris Kamara from Soccer Saturday. I see him reporting from, like, Turf Moor on on Sky Sports News, and I just start shouting. I'm like, Cammy, why don't you teach me that masculinity means more than just how many women you can have sex with? Why don't you teach me what growing up's about? How to manage my emotions? Why don't you teach me that, Cammy? Where the fuck were you? And that's too much to put on Chris Kamara. And to be honest, it might be a little bit unfair to put on my dad. But he is gone, isn't he? And he's never coming back. That's what grief teaches you, just to accept that you can't change things in the past and, and when things are over. There's loads of things in life you'll never get to do it again. 
and grief is just a like a strong example of that of the loss you face we're always losing shit like we're getting older we change as people all the time um but you know when when you get older you can't do the same things physically you used to be able to do oi oi um but you know you lose your child i'll never be that kid again waiting on the edge of my drive in my shin pads for Boris Johnson, it's it's over. But grief is like, you've just got to fucking accept this because it's not changing. And you can't go back and change things no matter how much you want to. And you don't always get the ending you think you deserve. Sometimes it just sort of ends.